<laughs> All right, I think we'll just get started. Um, so today we'll be looking into a, another topic, the magnetism over here, All right? Um, before that, I just want to remind you guys the homework number seven is due tonight, okay? Now um, it's only um, several hours from this point. So make sure you finish them by tonight, okay? All right, so let's take a look here. So um, basically for magnetism, I think we um, actually experience this a lot. So if you use compass, you know, it's, um, that's the, um, as a result of the needle is interacting with the earth's magnetic field, okay? And then a lot of devices we are using like the cell phones, um, et cetera, radios, et cetera. So it has to be uh, with the, uh, magnetic um, electromagnetic wave. So also magnetic field it's involved there. Okay. So that's really, really related to our daily life. Okay. But basically, um, so it was um, discovered by a Danish, um, Danish physicist um, that if you have a wire, okay. And if you have this in a circuit, if you close the switch, um, then there's current going through the wire. If that's the case, if you have current going through the wire in the second figure shown here, then it actually produce a magnetic field, okay? So um, if you have a compass here, then you will see the um, deflect of the needle with this um, switch being closed, okay? So that um, tells you that if you have a current going through a wire, then there's a magnetic field um, actually produced by the wire. So for magnets, um, Actually, um, so I don't know if you guys play with these blocks uh, when you were kids, but um, my kids, they like them very much. So um, they, yeah, a lot of times they are fighting against each other to get the, the blocks. And sometimes when I play with them, I feel like I, I enjoy playing uh, with the minutes uh, as well. So um, Let's um, take a look on um, some of the properties here. I think most of you guys know already. So for a magnet, it has two poles. One is called South Pole, one is called North Pole, okay? Um, so similar to charges, you have positive charge and then negative charges, okay? And the interaction of magnets is the same as the charges. So if you have like poles, they actually repel each other. If you have opposite pools, they will attract each other, okay? So um, those are the same. Now there's differences between um, magnets and um, the charges. So for charges, you can just divide them into small amount of charges. Um, for magnets, if you um, divide or cut a piece of magnet into two, then you um, have two magnets. Then on each other magnet, you will have a south pole and a north pole. Okay, so for, and then if you cut it down further into smaller pieces, the smaller pieces would also have a south pole and north pole. Okay, so um, you can cut into very small pieces. They still have two poles. Okay, so that's difference. For you, uh, if you cut a magnet, you, you, it doesn't just become like one south pole, one on north pole in that sense. Okay, so uh, basically you have two poles on each uh, magnet magnet, okay? Um, for the Earth itself, it's a giant um, magnet. It has its um, um, magnetic North Pole, okay? Actually, um, let's put this way. So the North Pole of the Earth geographically, that is close to the South Pole of the Earth's magnet, okay? So, but not exactly the same. So that's why if you have a compass, if you want to get to the North Pole of it, then uh, it will not direct you to exactly to the North Pole, but about a couple hundred miles away from it, okay, somewhere there, All right? They are not identically matching up. All right. However, um, so Earth's North Pole is uh, close to the um, Earth's magnetic South Pole, okay? And then the, it's um, magnetic North Pole is close to the Earth's ge ge geographically um, South Pole in that sense, okay? Um, over the year, like over millions of years, um, and the Earth's um, the magnetic field actually reverses poles a few times, okay? So this is called geomagnetic reversal, okay? And then, um, 
it happens now randomly, but um, has a range of between any um, like 0.1 to 1 million years. Okay, so with an average of 450,000 years. Okay, and it takes um, very long time for the complete reversal to um, happen. So most reversals are estimated to take between 1,000 to 10,000 years. Okay, um, the most recent one is uh, believed to be happening somewhere 780,000 years ago, okay? So you can imagine that because on average it's 450,000 years, so we are actually overdue uh, for a reversal, so it could happen anytime soon, okay? But um, yeah, when that happens, um, yeah, so everything will be, um, yeah, the Earth's magnetic field being a mess. Okay, so in that case, the compass will not um, work anymore. Okay, but um, no one knows when it's going to happen, so we don't have to worry about um, it right now. Okay, all right. So for magnets, okay, there's a lot of applications. For example, the records um, actually is the magnetic. Um, um, it's related to magnetism, okay? So you actually um, um, recall some um, signals onto a record, okay? So it's basically like you are writing the signal into the magnet. You can design this the strength of the magnet in all the this, um, small domains of the record, and then it will give you different strengths, okay? All right. So, now next, let's talk about the interaction of magnetic uh, field with um, objects. So mainly for charged objects, okay? So if this is um, experimentally determined, this is not the der derivation mathematically derived result, okay? So uh, for a charged particle, if it's moving inside in the presence of magnetic field, okay? So the magnetic field in this chapter you'll see is represented by letter B, that's magnetic field. And it's a vector just like an electric field. Okay? It has direction, it has, has magnitude. So if you have a charged particle moving inside a magnetic field, then it will experience force. The magnitude of force is equal to the charge, the absolute value of the charge, times the speed, times the B field, times the sine of theta, where theta is the angle between the magnetic field and the velocity. Okay, the direction of velocity and then direction of the magnetic field um, makes the angle theta. So in that sense, you can see um, for different scenarios, if your theta is equal to 90 degrees, that means B field and velocity is perpendicular to each other. So sine theta will disappear because it's basically one. Now, if theta is equal to zero, where velocity and B field are parallel to each other, so then force will be equal to zero, okay? So the scenario that you have charged particle moving in the magnetic field, but it will not experience any magnetic force. That's because theta is equal to zero. In general, you will have a theta, okay? All right. So that's the magnetic force for a charging um, object that's moving in the magnetic field, okay? So in that sense, you can calculate what's the magnetic field by using the equation. So then the magnetic field should be equal to the force, magnetic force experience divided by the charge times the speed times sine of the theta. Okay, and that will give you the magnetic field. Magnetic field is in the SI unit of Tesla. Okay, yeah, the same um, Tesla, the, the electric car company Tesla. Um, it's equal to, um, so Tesla um, in symbol, it's T, abbreviation T, is equivalent to one Newtons over amps times meters, okay? So amps coming from charge coolant divided by, uh, in the denominator you can see it's coolant times meter divided by second, okay? Meter divided by second give you velocity. If you do coolant divided by second, instead of meter divided by second, coolant divided by second will be the amps, okay, the current. So it's current times the meters, all right? And for the force, because we have QV sine theta, so you can see then um, it's actually a result of cross product of the velocity and the B field, okay? So to express magnetic field in vector form, this is more um, accurate, it include both the magnitude and the direction. So force is equal to Q, um, could be positive, could be negative, okay? That gives you direction. 
um, times the velocity cross product of B field. Okay, so that's the uh, vector cross product there. All right, now let's take a look on this here. It says an electron is projected into a uniform magnetic field of, so magnetic field is a vector. This is expressed in the vector in that 0.5 in the I direction plus 0.8 in the K direction times uh, of Tesla with a velocity of 3.0 in the I direction plus 4.0 in J direction times 10 to the six meters per second. What's the magnetic force? on the electron, okay? So this is the vector cross product of it. Um, I think we can take a look on this one together. So we are looking for magnetic force. All right, so magnetic force is equal to the charge times the velocity cross product of the B. It says an electron, so we know the charge is minus 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulomb for the charge, times the velocity 3.0 i plus 4.0 j on. Let me just use um, i and j with the head, times 10 to the 6 meters per second. Okay, so this guy cross the B field. So 0.5 in the I direction plus 0.8 in the J direction, that's in Tesla, okay? So <clears throat> then this would give you, um, let's do the, uh, we can put this 10 to the six um, in the front, okay? So then we'll be just doing the cross product of the two vectors. All right, so you can move this guy. So this is minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs times 10 to the six meters per second. And then the cross product of the two um, vectors cross our 0.5i plus 0.8, I think a K here. That's what's given. So you can put Tesla in front over here. It's just a unit, okay, or, or at the end, doesn't really matter. All right, so we have SI units for those um, units there. So then the result will be in the, in the Newtons for the force, okay? So we don't have to worry about the units there. So let's see, um, on this one, So you can do this guy cross this and then cross that, and then this guy cross this guy and then cross that, okay? So basically distribute it into, so 3.0i cross 0.5i, okay? And plus 3.0i cross 0.8k, all right? Plus 4.0j cross 0.5i, and then plus 4.0j cross 0.8k. All right, so that's the cross product. And then um, before um, the previous, uh, um, before the parentheses, you should have this guy multiplied by that. Okay, so it's minus 1.6. Now this will be reduced by six. So times 10 to the minus 13 should be in Newtons, okay? If you do the SI unit. Okay. So over here, we will see that um, if you do I cross I, okay, that will give you zero, right? I cross I is zero because it will be um, one times one times sine of the theta the two makes, okay? So that will be zero. So this guy is zero, all right? And then the rest over here, so you have I cross K, that will give you minus J, okay? I cross K, give you minus J. J cross I will give you minus K. And then J cross K will give you I, okay? J cross K will be I. So then this is equal to, the force is equal to minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 13 Newtons 
times the vectors. Let's start with the i here, so 3.2i. Okay, and then the j here minus 2.4j. And then the k here will be minus again. So four times 0.5 will be 2.0 k. Okay, so this is your magnetic force. All right, you can just put in the vector form like this, or you can uh, calculate um, the magnitude um, and then times the unit vector, okay? So because this is three-dimensional um, with IJK components, um, we don't do directional angle, okay? So uh, pretty much that would do it, okay? Questions you guys might have on this? All right, if that's clear, um, we will move on here. So um, for magnetic force, magnetic field, um, so the SI unit is Tesla. That a lot of times you also see people use uh, Gauss um, for the unit of magnetic field, okay? So then the conversion over here for Gauss is G, one G, um, 10,000 Gauss equals to one Tesla, okay? So that's the conversion over there. All right, and then some magnetic field uh, strengths are listed over here for the Earth's magnetic field is 0.5 Gauss. Okay, it's, um, it's a weak one, okay. All right. Now, because this is uh, for the force is equal to QV cross B, okay? So then if you have a charge moving in a magnetic field, you can determine the direction of the force by using right-hand rule, okay? This is called right-hand rule one. So um, this is how do you do it, okay? So you put your four fingers in the direction, um, in the direction of the velocity. Okay, and then curve your fingers towards the magnetic field. Okay, so in that in that sense, so then the the thumb will be in the direction of the um, magnetic force. Okay, so that's how you apply your right hand rule one. Okay, use your right hand right hand, so your fingers curl in the plane defined by the velocity and the magnetic field and sweep from velocity towards the magnetic field with your fingers, okay? With the smallest angle possible, the magnetic force is directly directed where your thumb is pointing. And if you have a negative charge, then you reverse the direction found, okay? By using the right hand rule here. So you still use the right hand for a negative charge, but once the magnetic field is determined, you flip it. All right, and um, so in this case, a lot of times we have um, magnetic force, we have magnetic field, and then sometimes we might be having electric field. So um, a lot of scenarios will be in three dimensional, okay? But when we are reading in two dimensions, so we can add one extra dimension if the direction is, um, perpendicular to the paper and then pointing out of the paper, we use a circle with a dot, okay? Or simply just dot, okay? So sometimes um, it's just dot. And then if this um, is going into the paper, we use cross or cross with a circle, so either way, okay? So the dots means uh, coming out of paper and then the cross means going into the paper. You can remember this by imagining if you see an arrow, if you see an arrow going towards you, um, that means you see a dot, right? So the head of the arrow towards you, you will see a dot. And then if the arrow is going away from you, you will see a cross at the, from, the, from the tail, okay? All right, now let's take a look on this. Um, conceptual question here, it's, uh, it's asking what's the direction of velocity of a negative charge that experience the magnetic force showing in each of these three cases, assuming it moves perpendicular to B field. 
All right. So it actually tells you the direction of force already. And then it's asking you to determine what's the direction of the velocity. And in this case, um, you have a negative charge in all these three figures. Okay? All right, so let's take a look here. Um, on the first one, so the force, it's upward. So that means that's the, that the, that's the direction, right? Now, the magnetic field is pointing outward. So you want to put your thumb in that direction and then your forefinger will be um, sweeping from, so now it's coming outward, right? So that means your velocity should be to the left if this were a positive charge, right? So your velocity goes in the left direction and then um, you sweep it towards you, okay? So velocity will be to the left um, if this is a positive charge, but we are having a negative charge. So then your velocity to be to the right, okay? So this is um, for A. Now for B, okay, so velocity is to the right on A. On B, again, um, that's going in that direction. The force is in the thumb's direction, okay? And then your forefinger should be curved sweeping to the right, so in that sense. So your velocity should be towards you if this were a positive charge, all right? But it's a negative charge, so it goes inward, okay? So the velocity on the second one should be inward, okay? The first one is to the right, the second one is inward. Now for the last one, uh, C here, so your force is to the left, so you go in that way. Now your um, B field goes into the into the paper, so you are doing it this way, right? So then, and then you sweep from the velocity to the direction of the B field. So that means your velocity is upward initially if this were a positive charge, but you are having a negative charge, so it's going downward, okay? So, a right, B inward, C downward, okay? So in that order. Any questions you guys might have on this one? Just remember this is a negative charge. So then once that the direction is um, of, so say either force or magnetic field or velocity is determined, then you flip that, reverse that direction, okay? To the opposite direction.
All right. So um, to visualize the magnetic field, we use uh, magnetic field lines. So this is similar to the electric field lines. So magnetic field lines are uh, imaginary live lines. You don't see the physical lines, but uh, you use them to visualize your magnetic field. Okay. Um, one thing here for magnetic field lines that is different from electric field line is magnetic field lines are closed loops. Okay. So they are in closed loops. Um, Unlike for electric field line, they point from positive terminal to a uh, positive charge to negative charge, okay? Or from infinity to negative charge from positive charge to infinity. So electric field lines, they are not closed lines, okay? Or closed curves. For magnetic field lines, they are closed curves, okay? They are pointing from the North Pole to the South Pole outside of the magnet. Inside the magnetic is from the South Pole towards the North Pole, okay? So um, um, you want to distinguish from inside and outside, okay? In that sense. All right. <clears throat> so yeah, I think we just mentioned this. So magnetic field lines um, exit from the North Pole of magnet uh, and then enters the South Pole of it. And then inside it goes from the South Pole and towards the North Pole, okay? Um, also magnetic uh, field lines, they do not cross just like electric field lines. That means um, at particular location, you only have one magnetic field strength, okay? You might have two field produced by two source, but when they cross, they add up, okay? So to be just one unique um, magnetic field at that particular point, okay? All right, there's um, different shapes of magnet. Um, so for U shapes, okay, so then it goes from the magnetic field lines will go from one pole, north pole to south pole inside it, okay? So for your bar, uh, for your uh, refrigerator magnets, it's basically made of small um, U shapes uh, magnets inside. So then on one side, you have stronger, you have more field lines, that means stronger magnetic field lines. On the other side over here, um, you have very little field lines or non-field lines. That means very little magnetic um, field, okay? So um, it will not stick to your refrigerator door if you flip it, okay? So only one side will be stick to the refrigerator. That's the um, reason there. All right. So again, um, if you have magnet like this, all right? So if you have single magnet and then um, it goes from North Pole to South Pole outside of the magnet and then here, the same thing over here. If you have two opposite bars close, close, close to each, each other or two like poles close to each other and then in the middle, you have um, no magnetic field. So this is similar to um, for electric field. If you have two positive charge or negative charge um, close to each other, the same magnetic field, and then in the middle, you have zero magnetic field, okay? On the other hand, um, it goes from field lines, goes from South Pole to North Pole, okay? So in that sense. All right, any questions you guys might have on magnetic field lines before we move on? Okay, so then um, let's move on here. So um, now let's take a look on motion of charged particles in magnetic field. So we know that if you have electric field, the figure shown on the top over here, um, the move charge particle will be deflected because then the force, electric force will be on the charge, okay? So if there's um, um, electric, if the velocity of the charge comes in perpendicular to the electric field, then this will be deflected, okay? Now, on the other hand, if you have charged particle enters the magnetic field perpendicular to the field, now in this case, because the force is equal to V cross B, so for cross product, if you do um, v, v cross B to vector cross product, then the result will be perpendicular to both vectors, right? So cross to um, be perpendicular to the velocity and then also the magnetic field. So in this case, if B and V are initial perpendicular to each other, then this force will be perpendicular to the velocity. So it will not change the magnitude of velocity, but it will just change the direction of it. 
So you will end up having a circular motion inside the magnetic field rather than being deflected, okay? Although the velocity direction changes, uh, but the magnitude will not be changed. Okay. <laughs> and uh, the path will be circular because it's a circular motion, all right? So in that sense, your force is perpendicular to your V. So then this force will not do any work, magnetic um, force do not do any work, okay? Unlike for the electric force, it will do work, okay? So that's the difference here. Um, one of the applications for um, charging particles moving in the uh, magnetic field is the um, mass spectroscope. So for example, if you have uh, a charge enters the field, perpendicular to the field with initial velocity and you'll have circular motion. So in this case, the force that is on the charge is um, the magnetic force, right? So the Q, V, B, sine theta. Now V and B are perpendicular to each other. So theta is 90. So then sine theta will be one. So Q, V, B. And that force is perpendicular to the velocity. So we'll change, change the direction. So that gives you the, as the send, provide you with the, Central pedal force as the central pedal force of mv square over r. Okay, in that sense, you can um, the v one v on the left will cancel out one of the v on the right. So then you can rewrite the equation here. So r will be equal to m times v divided by q divided by b. Okay, and you can calculate the radius of it if you know v and b and then the charges and the densities, uh, the mass of it. Okay. And once you have that, you can also calculate the period of this circular motion, okay? So the circumference two pi r divided by the speed will be the period. That will be equal to two pi m divided by qb, okay? And once you know the period, you can calculate the angular frequency, okay? Angular frequency is two pi times frequency or two pi divided by the q, all right? Or two pi divided by the, the t, sorry. So then um, T is equal to this guy. So angular frequency will be equal to Q over M times B, okay? <clears throat> so in a mass spectroscope, actually um, the use of it too is to distinguish between um, different isotopes, okay? So for different isotopes, they have the same charge, but um, different mass. So for example, U-235 and u 238, their, their masses are different. One is having 238 of the um, proton or neutron mass, and then the other is 235, okay? The nuclear uh, unit for the mass. So if they enter the field at the same location with the same speed, then you'll see them come out at different location over here. So that's equal to two times of the radius, okay? So by measuring this, um, two pies of the radius, you can figure out which one is the um, 235, which one is the 238, okay? Because they share the same charge, but just different mass, all right? Um, so let's take a look on one, um, one example here. So this one says, find the radius of the orbit when A, an electron, or B, a proton moves perpendicular to a magnetic field of 0.86 Tesla with a speed of 6.57, times 10 to the fifth meters per second, right? So the charge, either electron or proton goes in through this E field and the B field. So um, that's actually serving as a velocity selector, which we will see just in a, a few seconds, okay? And then enters this field, okay? So then uh, being deflected, we can um, calculate what's the radius in this problem. So again, it will be, um, QVB equal to MV square over R. Okay, so then you can solve for your R from there. Okay, I will give you guys just a couple of uh, minutes and then we can take a look at the solution together.
All right, so let's take a look here. So because this is a moving um, charged particle inside the magnetic field, so you will go um, undergo circular motion. So then the magnetic force is equal to QVB because V is perpendicular to B. So sine theta is equal to one, theta is 90 degree. And then for centripetal force, that will be just equal to MV squared over R. So these two should be equal to each other. So QVB is equal to MV squared over R. V cancels one V there. So you can, again, this is, um, for R it's going to be equal to MV over QB, okay? So then we can just plug in the numbers for the two, um, for electrons and the proton. So for electron of E, that's equal to the mass of electron times the V divided by the charge of electron will be E times B, okay? For the mass of electron, this is a constant number you can look up. Um, so 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. The speed is given as 6.57 times 10 to the fifth meters per second divided by electron charge is also a constant number. And then the B field is given as 0.86 Tesla. So let's um, give you 4.28 times 10 to the minus six meters. Um, somehow I'm using 6.47 on my note. So maybe that's a typo on the problem here. So if you use 6.47 should be about 4.28, okay, times 10 to the minus six. If you use 6.57, then it's a little bit larger than this guy, okay, just a little bit. Now for the proton, its radius will be the mass of the proton, the same speed, E will be the same. For a proton, it's carrying the same amount of charge as the electron does, but positive, okay? We don't care about the sign of the charges in this case, we just care about the radius. So that's a, a scalar quantity. So um, in this case, 1.673 times 10 to the minus 27 kilogram. That's also a constant that you can look up, okay? So 6.47 meters per second divided by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 and then 0.86 for the magnetic field. So in this case, it will be 7.87 times 10 to the minus six, okay? So you can see from this example, if two particles have the same charge, but different uh, masses. So then um, it basically, the radius is basically directly proportional to the masses. So that's why it's called a mass spectroscope, okay? Or mass spec spectrometer. All right, questions you guys might have on this example. All right, so if not, let's move on here. Um, Another application of magnetic field is called um, cyclotron. Okay, so basically this is to use to, this is a device used to accelerate a um, charged particle. Okay, so in the previous case, we can see the charge the electron or proton has a very large speed, right? So basically it's probably going through a cyclotron or uh, an oscillator. So this is how it works, okay? So let's magnetic field. North Pole and South Pole here uh, provide a magnetic field B in this direction, all right? And then um, for these two plates, there's um, electric field, okay, over here that is connected to an alternating current of voltage, high frequency voltage, okay? So once you have the ion released from the source over here and the middle here, you can uh, put a um, ion source over there. So pretty much like some filament, if you heat it, then the ion inside will be excited and then expel from it. 
So then close to one of this, um, like the D shape um, thing here. So then you can tune the frequency of your voltage. So then if you have a positive charge over here at this moment, you will have it oscillates through this electric field by having positive on this side, negative on this side, okay? And then it enters this region of the magnetic field. It will go a circular path, okay? Because it will be a circular motion. And then it will be now, when it reaches over here, you will flip your priority of the voltage source. So then positive on this side, negative on this side. So then it will be oscillate again. And then you are repeating it, okay, um, again. And then over several cycles here, the ions will be oscillated to a very large speed. Again, that go into uh, to hit the target at the tangential direction over there, okay? So that's how um, you can tune. Now the frequency, the angular frequency for the high uh, voltage, you can uh, calculate it's going to be Q over M times B. So it's determined by the B field, okay? And then the charge divided by the mass, all right? Now, if the charge has original velocity that's not exactly perpendicular to the B field, so then it will go in a um, helixal um, pattern over here, okay? So it will have, because you can divide the, you can resolve the velocity into two components, one parallel to the B field that will not have no effect, the other velocity perpendicular to the B field. So then that will be circular motion, but this component parallel to the B field will move after one circle. So then this is a heli um, helical path instead of circular path, okay? All right. Um, so Earth, because Earth has a um, magnetic field, so then um, for the radiation is coming out of the sun. So sun has solar wind um, and then it actually basically uh, puts out the radiation all the time. So because of the Earth's field, so then um, the Earth's field actually protect us from those uh, radioactive um, um, charges from the sun. So let's take a look on one of this video over here. Let me stop sharing and then uh, play the video for you guys. All right, let's check on this video. Most visible in the darkness of night, legends suggest that these bright dancing lights might be spirits, omens, or dragons in the sky. Known as Aurora Borealis in the north and Aurora Australis in the south, this colorful exhibition is actually the result of collisions between charged particles from the sun and atoms that they encounter as they enter the Earth's atmosphere. Disturbances associated with magnetism in sunspot regions called coronal mass ejections or solar flares allow free electrons, protons, and alpha particles to boil off into space in all directions from the sun, forming the solar wind. Most of the solar wind charged particles reaching Earth are deflected by Earth's magnetosphere. However, near the polar regions, because of the geometry of the Earth's magnetic field, they spiral into Earth's atmosphere due to the magnetic force that acts on a charged particle moving through a magnetic field. The direction of that force can be found using the right hand rule. The magnetic force can be computed from when these charged particles strike atoms in Earth's atmosphere they cause electrons in the atoms to move to a higher energy state. When the electrons drop back to a lower energy state, they release photons, small bursts of energy in the form of light. And the night sky becomes a canvas painted with glowing lights. The colors created depend on which gas is being excited by the charged particles and on how much energy is being exchanged. Whether you're enticed by legend or by curiosity, the auroras are a spectacular sight to behold. All right.
right. So let's take a look on um, another application. It's called the um, velocity selector for electric uh, magnetic field. So this has to do with combination with the electric field. Um, so what happens is here you have electric field provided by these two plates, positive charge and negative charge. So E field points from the positive charge to negative charge. And then perpendicular to the plane here, you have magnetic field. Okay, so magnetic field goes into the uh, paper. Now, if you have a charged particle with velocity of V goes through here, um, if you want it to be going right through without being deflected, then the two forces on the charged particle, the electric force and magnetic force should balance out, okay? So in that sense, QE will be equal to QVB. So then um, E will be equal to V times B or V is equal to E divided by B. So you can see, you can tune the E and B so that you only have certain um, charge it has certain speed that will just pass through, okay? Anything, any um, any charges without this velocity V equal to E divided by B will be deflected, okay? Either upward or downward, depending on the speed. So then a result will be when you have a bunch of charged particles with different speed going through here, only the charge have this speed will be able to go through. So this is a device called the velocity selector. Okay, so basically electric field force, electric force be equal to magnetic force, okay? Um, let's take a look on um, this example here. So it says an electron of kinetic energy 200, 2000 kilovolts passes between parallel plates that are 1.0 centimeter apart and kept at a uniform electric field of 3.0 times 10 to the fifth V over a meter, what's the strength of the uniform magnetic field B will allow the electron to travel and deflect it through the place, assuming E and B are perpendicular to each other. So we can assume in the previous figure, and then we can use that one for this, okay? So pretty much I think we can take this down here as the figure for this problem. All right, I can have you guys um, try this in a couple of minutes and then we can take a look at the solution together after that. All right, let's, so let's take a look here. 
Um, so this is about a velocity selector. So we can see that E should be equal to V times B, or we are looking for B field, this is equal to E divided by V, okay? So we need to, um, I think it tells us the E, we need to figure out what's the V. It also tells us that the kinetic energy is, so kinetic energy is one half M V square, okay? So this is the electron, so mass of electron equals to 2000 electron volts, okay? So for electron volts is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules, okay? That's the conversion from electron volts to joules. And one half of 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilogram, that's the mass of it, V square. So we can calculate what's V first, okay? Um, from here, so you, multiply both sides by two and then divide both sides by that. So 2000 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 multiplied by two divided by 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 okay, kilograms and then square root of it to get the speed. So the speed will be 2.65 times 10 to the seven meters per second. And then plug that into this guy, you'll get your magnetic field. Okay, so that equals to the electric field given as 3.0 times 10 to the fifth divided by 2.65 times 10 to the seven. Okay. <clears throat> so then that would be equal to 1.13 times 10 to the negative two. That should be in Tesla, okay? So because we have everything else in SI units, so the results should be also already in SI unit, okay? Questions you guys might have on this one? All right, so if not, we will stop here for the lecture today. I will see some of you guys in the afternoon for the lab, okay? So um, for you guys have lab this afternoon, we are making up the lab we missed due to the snow day, okay? And then Thursday, uh, we don't have a lab, but um, I will see the rest of you guys on tomorrow's lecture. Bye, guys. Bye, have a good day. You too, thank you.